Hey guys, Pablo with PND, and today at Top Reddit Post, we're gonna be taking a look at Nuclear Revenge. And if you haven't subscribed to the channel yet, don't forget to do so and hit that notifications button for more content coming every week. And in the end of this video, I'm gonna be talking about our 10,000 subscriber giveaway. So now to our video. Beat old woman to a pope, lose your ears. Context. Eastern European country in the 90s. Alcohol addiction is crazy. And still is, by the way. I've seen my share of alcohol-induced family drama. This one I would qualify of nuclear revenge. Militia decide to ban all homemade alcohol, usually potatoes, corn, and wheat-based, and actually enforce it by going after producers. First-hand experience. Everyone was doing it because you couldn't get any damn labor without alcohol bottle as a tip at the end. There was a lonely lady, 80s, living by herself with no family. Lots of people in the village helped her with some meals, clothing, working her garden, or repair her house. She tipped everyone with a little bottle of homemade alcohol, a third of a liter. As per some alcoholics saying she tried her best to have it good and even used some berries to make it taste something else. Anyway, some low-life crap denounced her to the militia. Only one douchebag came and when he found her stash, like 10 liters or so, he beat her to a pope. Like blue-black pope. She was scared to look like that weeks after the beat-up never walked right after this. It's nowhere like Western countries. Militia had all the power, and if you didn't lower your head or bribe, you could end up for months in jail somewhere, or even never come back. It sucked. What happened next, I heard it from some people I trust. I was a kid then. Long story short, douchebag militia man got jumped by some man from the village and they beat him really bad. He spent months in the hospital. What makes it nuclear is that they cut his ears and made him eat them. Not 100% sure this eating part happened, by the way. I actually met this militia guy a year later and he had plastic ears. He also visited the old woman twice a month to help her with stuff. People in the village never got militia raid after that. Sorry with grammar. English not my first language and typing is hard. Edit. I wrote he spent months in jail. It was actually hospital. Militia men never went to jail. Whatever the hell they did. Real douchebag at that time. Look guys, um, I grew up in the 80s and 90s and I'll tell you this. Until the fall of the Berlin Wall, that was a life people in Eastern European countries had. It's really sad and we try to forget about that. But when you look at a story like that and you look at today, how life is, you may think stuff like that would never happen. Well, it is to. Paintballs. Not safe for work. What? It is safe. Reposting from r slash pro revenge because illegal actions got it taken down from there. Not my story, but an old trucker who doesn't have Reddit. We got stuck at sea on a rescue boat yesterday and passed the time sharing r slash pro revenge stories. So as told by him, I was a fuel trucker. Say that five times fast. I had a regular daily routine in my state and would start just after 4 p.m. So I was refilling the area's gas stations roughly after evening rush. This had me driving late into the night in this one small town. It seemed like every night around 10, this douchebag in a T-top would pass me on the road while jerking off. He always seemed to find me, pull up next to me on the highway, and try to get my attention before zipping off down the road. One week! I saw him three nights in a row at the same red light. It was a summer, so he had his roof down each time. Then I got an idea. 
a wonderful idea. When I got home, I gathered what I needed from my teenage son's room and slept better than I had in weeks. The next night, I drove through that small rural deep south town. Sure enough, Mr. T-Top pulled next to me, all whacking it and giggling as he looked up at me, noticing that my window was down for the first time. Then he saw the paintball gun. My son was an avid at the sport and had saved for a long time to buy this thing and modify it out for Team League stuff. My point is, it could shoot very, very fast. And I lit him up. The side of his car, him and his <clears throat> lap where he covered in green paint in about 3 seconds. I don't know how long it took him to get in gear and run that red light, but I was empty before he was out of the intersection. Never saw him again. Hey man, I'll be honest, there's some crazes out there, and if you have a chance to mess with Dan, do so. First of all, that's freaking illegal, and I heard some crazy stories of people even doing that on buses. In the most Brazil seems to be having a huge issue with that right now. And I'll tell you, don't freaking do it, okay? Don't be a creep. Just go by your business. And don't be a stalker either. Literal law broken so it would not fit on r slash pro revenge. From r slash entitled parents. Yem breaks my phone after EK tries and fails to unlock it. I steal her purse. Now, this might belong in r slash pro revenge, but I don't know. And no dialogue, because I'm a lazy bastard. The cast. Like any other EM story ever, I will not insult your intelligence by repeating the acronyms. One winter, I was taking the train home after a day of doing nothing at the university, mostly just gaming with my friends. I owned a pretty neat All View X2 So Style Plus for some time. Thing held on for a long time. It was pattern locked, as I'm bad with words and numbers, but good with shapes. I was on my phone browsing Pinterest next to EM and EK. Bad movie one, when EK comes and asks, more like the man's, to let him play on my phone. Feeling like a smart ass, I locked the phone and gave it to EK. Bad move too. After about two minutes, EK tells EM he can't unlock the phone. Being like any other EM, she demands to unlock her child's phone. I say no, ask for my phone back, and she proceeds to smash it to the ground, being all smug about it. Now, it was an old phone. I wanted to replace it either way, and backed up everything on an SD card and left it at home. Mostly, I used it for internet. I was quiet, just shrugged, because I wanted revenge. So I didn't scream or anything, I just picked up the phone and removed the SIM card while EM and EK moved farther away. At my stop, the train began to get crowded. I made my way to the exit, making sure I pass EM and snatched her purse while she wasn't looking. The purse wasn't on her arm. It was on the seat beside her, stupid woman. She was still telling her kid about how much of an asshole I was, making it easy to pick it up without her noticing. The original plan was to smack her head and then move out quickly. It might sound stupid, but I've done it before and got away with it. I am easy to miss. I had my jacket on and many people had their hood ups, so it was easy to blend in. Before the train left, I knocked on the window next to EM and held up her purse. The look she gave was the most satisfying thing I've ever saw. She tried to stop the train, but the emergency stop was either broken or non-existent. Old train and the crowd made it impossible to move around. I moved to a place with no cameras around and searched through her purse. Got close to 400 euros, money was in a different currency, and a Samsung. I can't remember what Samsung and S something maybe. I tossed her purse in a trash bin outside and went to McDonald's and got a happy meal. Even though I had a full beard. I didn't regret anything. 
She broke my stuff, I got it back, plus interest. If someone criticized me for it, screw you, I don't care. I also wear gloves, so no fingerprints. Added. Look, thanks for the silver, but you really didn't have to. I post it here for you to laugh at my experience not to make people waste money. Still, thanks. Look guys, I'm the biggest one on people getting revenge on others, but let me tell you something, don't do anything illegal because you can end up being the one in trouble. Just call the conductor, you'll probably call the police and the police is gonna be waiting for that woman on her next stop, okay? Don't take those risks, it's not worth it. Teens threw eggs at our neighbor's house, dented and broke a window on their truck. So, in our neighborhood for years, teens used to egg house around October. It caused problems since in Alaska it would be around freezing at the time and eggs would freeze to the house and wouldn't be able to be removed until spring. One year, me and my half-brother had gotten some paintball guns they were awesome for little wars and playing around and having captured the flag matches. Well, some friends called our house a few days before Easter and said they just got egged. So me and my brother talked and decided to climb onto the garage roof with the paintball guns and wait for the eggers. After about an hour or two, waiting on the roof in the freezing cold, minus 10, maybe minus 15 Fahrenheit, they finally pulled up in front of our house. It's a nice Ford F-150 or something like that. Think cool kids truck. Three to five people on the bed of the truck started throwing eggs at our house. Me and my brother let loose. The sounds of paintballs painting off metal and flash was awesome. The OW! OH HELL! Ugh! That came from the eggers was better. The back window breaking on the truck scared us though, so we hopped off the roof and hid the paintball guns. While breaking them down, we realized the paintballs had frozen the cold, so that's why the window broke. In case the cops came, they never did. Nobody egged our neighborhood that I know of since. Alright guys, I was stationed in Alaska, Fort Wayne right? And I can tell you this. When it gets cold in there, it gets cold. And Easter, what people usually do is fill up balloons with water and put colorants on and leave them for a few minutes outside and then cut the balloon out and you have a nice egg-shaped icicle. I bet those guys will never be egging anybody's house ever again. Do you threaten my dog? I'll persecute you with a shotgun. So. This is my first post in this page. Also, English isn't my first language, so sorry for the grammar errors and everything else. Please correct me if you like. Also, this happened when I was like 5 years old and my dad told me the whole thing. AU is for douchebag uncle, dog is for my amazing dog, me and Skywell is for me. About my dog. When I was a cute boy, I had the best and smartest dog I've ever had. His name was Brian, pronounced Brian in my country. And he was an old German Shepherd that my family got from a nice old lady because she couldn't take care of him anymore. As I said, he was smart. For example, if my little two-year-old sister at the time go to the outside, my dog just drag her inside the house again. or. When I just escaped from home just to play in the woods, I was a savage kid. He would just guide me to my home in the night and a lot more things like that. I loved that dog so much. Sadly, he passed away by cancer when I was like 10 years old. So here goes the story. As I said, I had a dog when I was 4 to 5 years old and I also had and also still have an douchebag uncle. Douchebag Uncle was and is a piece of garbage, a parasite. He steals from his own family and not only things or money, but he also steals a song that my dad wrote and sold it. Also, he used to drink a lot in family reunions and was disgusting with kids. And boy, he terrorized me, he screams at me, he makes horrible jokes and his favorite threatened me by saying, I'm gonna kill your freaking dog. 
My dad hit him us and tell him to stop, but not the case. So one day, I was in the house of my grandma, my mom and dad go to the market for something, and then douchebag uncle enters in the house and saw me. I gonna kill your freaking dog, he screams. I got scared and start to cry and run in the house, and he persecutes me, repeating it himself. Then I see it, in all of his glory, behind the wardrobe, my other uncle's shotgun, and I grab it. I was very big for my age, so I can't handle his weight. And then I aim at douchebag uncle and said the most coolest thing I've ever said. Who are you going to kill? And boy, he runs outside the house and falls to the ground. I repeat myself and go for him again. Who are you going to kill? In that moment, the cute kid was gone. I was full of rage. He was screaming like an ape and he crossed his way below a car. Then people start to come in, and when someone tries to get the gun, I just point at them, screaming in rage. Who are you going to kill? It was like a mantra. And then I saw my dad. All the blind rage goes off, I drop the gun and start to cry like the little and traumatized kid that I was. My dad screams my name and gets the shotgun away from me. My mom grabs me while my dad opens a shotgun, then he saw my uncle. He saw me again and saw the shotgun one more time. It was charged, he said. Douchebag uncle screams of terror one more time and starts yelling at my dad and then my dad said, This all was your fault. I said to you, stop terrorizing Skywell, but you just couldn't stop, right? Just shut the hell up, I'm using all my strength not to shoot you in the face right now. Douchebag uncle never threatened me or my dog again. The funny part? The shotgun wasn't charged at all. PD. I don't know how the police didn't get involved. Alright people, that's a great story because there's a lot of douchebags in people's families. Uh, I get a lot of people and the most autistic kids because of one of my videos talking about entitled parents against autistic kids and they tell me horror stories sometimes of stuff they went through with family members and the worst part is like for a kid you should be able to trust your family you should be able to you know not worry about that but it's not how it is there's nasty people everywhere Hey guys, I hope you liked this video and at 10,000 subscribers, I gonna be giving 5 $30 gift certificates to any store or service of your choice and depending on the revenue I get from YouTube, I may be running also a PS4 or Xbox One drawing to any subscriber that leaves a comment in any of my videos. So thank you very much, don't forget to subscribe and leave a comment and give them a thumbs up or down. And I'll be talking to you guys during the week. Thank you very much.